In this video, we're going to complete example two. We're going to simplify the following expressions which involve either multiplication or division. There are actually six questions we're going to go over. On this page, we have four of the questions, and then on the next page, we have the other two. Now, I'm not going to just explain how to simplify these expressions, but I'm also going to explain why the methods I show you work. So I'm going to show you some really basic examples to begin with. We'll look at an example that involves multiplication. And we'll also look at an example that involves division. So a really simple example that involves multiplication would be to simplify the expression 2a times 3b. And some of you know how to do this. It's really simple. All you do is you multiply the numbers, 2 times 3, which gives us 6. And then you write the pronumerals next to that. We had a and b. So we get the simplified expression 6ab. So why does this method work? Well, let's look at the original question 2a times 3b. Whenever a number is next to a pronumeral, this means multiplication. So we could actually write it as 2 times a times 3 times b. And you might remember way back in primary school, you learned that if you had an expression such as 2 times 3 times 4, you can multiply it in any order that you wish. You could multiply it as 4 times 3 times 2, or you could multiply it as 3 times 2 times 4. The order in which you multiply these expressions doesn't matter, because either way you're going to get the same solution. So how does this apply to the simplifying of our algebraic expression here? Well, let's change the order. Let's change it to 2 times 3 times a times b. And when you do this, you can see that 2 times 3 is 6, and we get 6ab again. So when we simplify algebraic expressions that involve multiplication, we're simply just changing the order in which things are multiplied. Let's now move on to division. Let's do a really simple example. Let's do 2ab over 6ab and simplify it. Now some of you might remember that when you have the same pronumeral above or below, you can cancel it out. We can cancel the a's and we can also cancel the b's, giving us the fraction 2 over 6, which, by the way, we can simplify to 1 over 3. Now, why is it that we're allowed to do this? Why are we allowed to cancel the same pronumeral above as we do below? Well, you might remember when you look back at our basic rules with fractions, that you're allowed to multiply and divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same thing or same number. For example, if I had the fraction 1 over 2, I can multiply both the top and the bottom by 3. And when I do that, I get 3 over 6. When you look at these two fractions, they're actually the same. One half is exactly the same as 3 over 6. They represent the same amount. So if we're allowed to multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by the same thing, we're allowed to undo this as well. So what I'm trying to say is, I could have crossed these threes out which would mean I would still be left with a half. I'd still be left with the same fraction, which is essentially what we're doing here. To begin with, we were multiplying 2 and 6 by a and b, both above and below the fraction. I'm just undoing that. I'm undoing the multiplication by a and b. All right, let's get into our example now. Example 2, question a. We're going to simplify all of these. And you might remember that when you multiply, you first multiply the numbers. So 5 times negative 3 will give us negative 15. And then we see we have the pronumerals a and b. So I'm going to write them next to my negative 15. I get negative 15ab. 
looking at question B, I've only got one number. I've got the number 3. So I don't have to multiply it by anything. I'm just going to leave it as 3. And now I'm going to look at my pronumerals. I've got one C, two Ds, and an E. What do I do in that case? Well, I have one C, two Ds is written as D squared, and then an E. All right, looking at question C, this is a division question. So I can cancel when I've got the same pronumeral above or below. I'm going to cancel my Xs. That gives me the fraction 20y over 4. Now, you should always look at your numbers and just check if you can simplify it, and I can. I can actually divide 20 by 4, which gives me 5. 20 divided 4 is 5, so I'm going to write this as 5y. All right, moving on to question D. This is a division question. If you get a question with division, you need to rewrite it as a fraction. It just helps you work it out properly. So 6u squared v over 10uv. Now you might notice with u squared, that, that actually means that there are two u's there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it as 6uuv instead of u squared. Okay, and the reason I'm doing that is so that when I cancel one u above and below, I'm still left with one u at the top. And now I can cancel the v's as well. Now, not everyone does this. You don't have to rewrite it like I have, but if it helps, please do so. This gives us the fraction 6u at top and 10 at the bottom. And we can simplify the numbers. We can halve the 6 and 10, giving us 3 and 5. So 3u over 5. Okay, now let's move on to question E. Once again, we're going to rewrite this as a fraction. So we've got negative 5 above, we've got a squared b. That means two a's and a b. So I'm going to actually write it down as a, a, b. And then at the bottom, we've got 15 a, b squared. So we've got two b's here. So I'm going to write down 15 a, b, b. Now I can cancel. I can cancel 1a above and below and 1b above and below, leaving me with the fraction negative 5a over 15b. Now I can simplify the numbers. 5 over 15 is the same as 1 third. So I'm going to write this now as negative 1a over 3b. I've changed 5 over 15 to 1 over 3. And you might remember that we never write the number 1 next to a pronumeral. We just take it out. So I'm going to now rewrite this again as negative a over 3b. And sometimes people like to put the negative right at the beginning of the fraction, like so. Either one of these answers is perfectly fine. Okay, now moving on to question f. We can see we've got two S's above and below. I can actually cancel that out straight away. I can cancel out the two S's, and I can cancel out the T's as well, leaving me with the fraction 21U over negative 7, and I've got U squared below, so I'm going to write it as two U's. Now I can cancel out the U's above and below, leaving me with the fraction 21 over negative 7u. So can I simplify this? Well, I do know that 21 divided 7 is 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that 3 at the top of the fraction, because 21 divided 7 is 3. The u needs to stay at the bottom of the fraction. And the negative also needs to go there. Now, I don't particularly like having the negative at the bottom of the fraction. And I would suggest moving it either to the top or next to this bar here. This is called the vinculum bar. So you could rewrite it as either negative 3 over u or as negative 3 over u. All three of these simplified solutions that I've given you are correct. You could 
put either one of these three as your response and get full marks. Anyway, that concludes our video on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.